All right, let's take a look at now at these components of verse and rhyme. We're going to take a look at verse, stanza, rhyme schemes, end rhyme, internal rhyme, slant rhyme, even though they're the most appropriate terms, masculine rhyme and feminine rhyme, free verse, and blank verse. So with a verse and a stanza, a verse is basically just a line in a poem, and a stanza is a group of verses, kind of like a paragraph within a poem, which many times will have some sort of meter and order. So as you see a paragraph when you're reading a novel, uh, consider stanzas, thought groups you put together in the same sort of way. Let's take a look here. Emily Dickinson, a bird came down the walk. So in this poem, this is a verse, it's a line, and you know, here we've got two stanzas, because they're separated from each other. Like I said before, this is just part of a poem where you're going to be taking excerpts, so you know, this is just part of this poem, but I wanted to put two stanzas together to show you how they're separated. The rhyme scheme is um, a pattern that the rhymes in a poem follow. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here we've got A, B, A, B. Okay. Robert Frost, neither out, far, nor deep. I'm going to read this poem so we can hear the uh, rhyme here. The people along the sand all turn and look one way. They turn their back on the land. They look at the sea all day. So you could just read it out and sometimes you may not even hear the rhyme in there, but pausing at the end, stressing the end, you can hear that it's not A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, like a lot of the music, a lot of the hip hop maybe that you listen to has that sort of rhyme scheme. This is A, B, A, B. So you can see here that sand rhymes with land and way would rhyme with day. So this is an example of an A, B, A, B rhyme. Let's take a look at the A, B, B, A rhyme. Here we've got John Milton on his being arrived to the age of 23. Perhaps my semblance might deceive the truth that I to manhood am arrived so near. And inward ripens doth much less appear that some more timely happy spirits induth. So this is an A, B, B, A rhyme. And just looking at the way this goes, in truth, in duth, and then we've got near and appear. Much different than the previous one, but it still follows just two different types of rhymes. We've got um, internal rhymes and end rhymes. Here's an example of an internal rhyme, which would be a rhyme inside of the line, or inside of the verse. So this is from Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary. Dreary with weary, we can see here rhymes in the, in, in the internal part of the verse there. So this is an example of an internal rhyme. Now, the end rhyme is what we usually look at when we read things. It's what we're used to. We have here an example from William Blake, the angel. I dreamt a dream, what can it mean? And that I was a maiden queen, guarded by an angel mild, witless woe was ne'er beguiled. So here you can see mean queen and mild and beguiled. An example of an end rhyme, which is, in this case, you could see it's A-A-B-B. So, a slant rhyme has a couple other names here, but we're going to stay with slant rhyme. This is when stressed syllables of the consonant match, but the preceding vowels don't. I have an example here, uh, another poem from Emily Dickinson, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. So this is an example of a slant rhyme, because you can hear that we have soul, all. They're not exactly rhyme, but it's a slant rhyme, because we've got the L sound in there. I just wanted to point out that, you know, 
This is not only found in, in poetry, but it's also found in hip-hop. Uh, Notorious B.I.G. and also Nas have used it a lot in their lyrics. Masculine and feminine rhyme. Like I said, these are not modern terms, but you may run into them in your studies. So a feminine rhyme, sometimes called a double rhyme, is a rhyme that matches two or more syllables. The final syllable is R unstressed, and it usually is at the end of the line. Let's take a look here uh, by a poem by Will William Wadsworth, London, 1802. Now, Milton, Milton, thou shouldst be living at this hour. England hath need of thee. She is a fen of stagnant waters, altar, sword, and pen. Fireside, the heroic wealth of hall and bower have forfeited their ancient English dower. So we can see here, hour, bower, dower. They don't, they're not stressed at the end. They're stressed the second to last here. Hour, bower, dower. So this is an example of a feminine rhyme. A masculine rhyme, a rhyme that matches only one syllable. Usually the final syllable is unstressed, and it usually is at the end of the line. Um, this is a, a majority of all English language poetry. So this is an example from John Donne, Death Be Not Proud. Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow. So you could see here, so, overthrow. Um, then if we keep reading, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me from rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be. Once again, me, be. So you, can, you could see here, and that also rhymes with thee. So you could see here in this case, the stress is at the end. And that is an example of a masculine rhyme. Free verse. This is the type of poetry that's taken from French, French word, vers libre. It doesn't follow a regular meter or rhythm. It's closest to imitating conversation. Personally, this is how I write poetry because, you know, I like to have a conversive style. And we can see that here with this poem by Walt Whitman entitled, A Noiseless Patient Spider. A noiseless patient spider, I marked where and a little promontory stood isolated, marked now to explore the vacant, vast surrounding. It launched forth filament, filament, filament out of itself, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. So you can see here that there's no rhyme and there's no pattern going on here. It's just free verse. It's an example of something that might imitate conversation. Let's take a look at blank verse. Please uh, keep in mind that blank verse sounds like free verse, but it's a little different here. This is a verse that does not rhyme, but it's written in iambic pentameter, which is ten syllables. It's used in poems and dramas. It's often used in character monologues. So let's, let's take a look at a short part here from Macbeth. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools. So you can see here, none of these words rhyme. But it does follow a specific rhythm. So these are some examples that we should keep in mind as we move along. 